All right, welcome to the second part of the tutorial. We are going to add some enhancements to our sparkler for a more realistic and beautiful result. But before we do so, take some time to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video to support me. All right, for our first enhancement, we want to add some variation to the direction of the sparks when they are emitted. Right now, um, if we should play the animation, as you can see, they are emitted perfectly uniform from the emitter. And this is because our emitter is perfectly spherical. So we will slightly deform it and animate the deformation to add variations to the directions of the sparks when they are emitted. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, we will enable show overlays and make sure our emitter is currently selected. Let's head over to the uh, modifier properties and let's uh, click on add modifier and choose this place. Now, as you can see, our emitter is blown out of proportion, all right? And uh, this will soon be corrected with the displacement texture. Uh, first of all, let's head over to the modifier properties again. And let's make sure that our displace modifier is on top of the particle system. So click to drag. All right. Uh, we want to make sure that the displace modifier is processed before our particle system. All right. Now we want to control the displacement of our um, emitter using a texture. So go ahead and click on the new texture button. And let's uh, set the name of this to Texture Emitter Noise. All right, then we want to head over to the Texture Properties. And uh, we want to make sure that our Texture Emitter Noise is currently selected, as you can see here. And let's set the Texture Type to uh, Clouds. And uh, we want to set the um, Noise Basis to the improved perlin, and then we want to set the size to a value of 0 0.01 and the depth to a value of 18. Now, as you can see, our emitter is seriously distorted, and this is because the display strength is too high. So let's head back to the modifier properties and let's reduce the strength to a value of 0 0.004. And let's set the mid level to a value of 0.7. All right, now if we should um, zoom in closely to our emitter, we can see it is slightly deformed just the way we wanted it. We don't want the display strength too high, otherwise, the variation to the direction of the sparks will be too strong and they will appear scattered. All right, next we want to create. Um, another object to control the deformation of our uh, emitter and this can be done if we head over to the uh, displace modifier we can set the coordinates of the texture to another object all right now we are going to use an empty for this so let's head back to the viewport and first of all let's hit shift c to bring the 3d cursor back to the center of the viewport next let's hit shift a and let's go to empty and let's add the arrows type. And let's set the radius to a value of 2 centimeters. Next, we want to zoom in closely to the um, emitter. So hit the period on the numpad. And uh, let's make sure our empty is selected. Hit F2 to rename it to empty displays test code. All right, now what we want to do is parent our empty to the emitter. And this is because we want it to always follow the emitter. All right, so um, making sure that the empty is currently selected, let's hit shift and click on the emitter to add it to the selection. And as you can see, it is the lighter orange color, meaning it is active in the selection. This is what we want. Hit control P on the keyboard and let's choose object keep transform. Now, if we should move the um, emitter, you can see that the empty follows it uh, wherever it goes. 
All right, so let's uh, let's right click to cancel the motion. Next, let's um, head over to the modifier properties and select our new empty object. All right, so now if we should move the empty object around, as you can see, this affects the displacement of our emitter. All right, so let's right click to cancel the transform. All right, now what we want to do finally is to animate our empty because uh, we want the deformation on our emitter uh, to be changing during the animation uh, duration. All right, now um, we can do this easily by adding a noise modifier to our empty and this will move it randomly around. Okay, so to do this, uh, let's head over back to frame one. And let's uh, make sure our empty is currently selected. Hit I on the keyboard and let's set the keyframe for location. All right. Now, what we want to do next is to bring up our graph editor and add our noise modifier. So let me increase the height of the timeline and let's drag out a new area and let's uh, change the editor type to a graph editor. Okay, let me just uh, stretch this a little bit more. Now in the graph editor, let's show the transform F curves. All right, so click on the object transform. And as you can see, we have the X, Y, and Z location. Uh, we first of all, we work with the X location and later copy um, the noise modifier to all the other locations. All right, so select the X location F curve and let's hit N on the keyboard. Let's head over to the modifiers tab and click on add modifier and choose noise. Uh, next, we want to set the scale to a value of 0.2 and the strength to a value of 0 0.01. Now let's copy the noise modifier by hitting or clicking on the copy F modifiers. Select our Y location and click on the paste F modifier. Uh, select the Z location and do the same here. Uh, next, we want to um, add different phases for each of the noise modifier for the different locations, all right? I found this to work much better if they had different values. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 2 and uh, move to this one and set it to a value of 0.5, all right? Uh, next, we want to um, just test this out. So let's first of all uh, select our emitter. And let's head over to the particles properties and let's uh, hide the particles for now. So click on this icon and what we are going to do is to play the animation and we want to hide the particles so that they do not uh, interfere with our result for now. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and as you can see, our um, empty is randomly moving around and this is affecting the deformation of the emitter. All right, let's go ahead and pause this and move back to frame one. We want to go ahead and re-enable our particle system. And then uh, let's move over to the source uh, section and let's make sure the use modifier stack is on and this will allow the particle system to use our displace modifier. All right, this will take that into consideration before the sparks are emitted. Okay, so let's... Um, Go ahead and zoom out a little bit and uh, let's click on the play button. Now, um, as you can see, there is some slight variation added to the directions the sparks are emitted. All right, let's pause this. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how this will look if I should increase the display strength. All right, so move back to the modifier tabs and let's set this to a value of 0 0.04. Now, if we should play the animation, as you can see, uh, the sparks are emitted all over. They look really scattered, all right? And this is not realistic. So um, our value of 0 0.004 works quite well. So let's pause and then reset this to 0 0.004 again. All right, now if we should... Um, Replay the animation. As you can see, this looks quite good. All 
all right for our next enhancement we want to add a flame to our sparkler we can use our emitter by increasing the strength of our displace modifier to make it look like a flame however doing so will affect the amount of variations in the direction of our emitted sparks so we will duplicate the emitter hide it from rendering and use the duplicated version as our flame all right so um first of all let's make sure the emitter is selected then hit shift d to duplicate it and right click to cancel any transform next let's hit f2 on the keyboard to rename it to sparkler flame all right next uh, we want to remove the particle system from our flame so let's head over to the uh, particle properties and let's make sure the sparkler flame is the currently selected one and not the emitter and let's hit the minus button to remove the particle system okay so now we want to parent our flame to the emitter and uh, we want to do this in the outliner because um, in the viewport the two of them overlap and they are of the same shape so it's gonna be difficult to select either one of them so let's uh, head over to the outliner and let's uh, hold on on control and add the emitter to the selection let's bring the mouse back to the viewport hit ctrl p and choose object keep transform next we want to um, head over back to the outliner and select our flame as you can see it's now a child of the emitter so um, let's click to select the sparkler flame head over to the modifier properties and let's increase the strength of our displace modifier 2.02 and let's set the mid level to a value of 0 0.550 great stuff so now we want to hide the uh, emitter from renders so let's head over to the particle properties and let's move to the render section and let's set the show emitter off and uh, we also want to test out our flame so let's temporarily move to the viewport display and let's just temporarily um, disable our show emitter and next we want to um, disable show overlays and let's set the viewport shading to the render preview and let's um, head over back to frame one on the timeline and let's play this one out now i think i like the way the flame looks but it would definitely need improvement later on in the tutorial so i'm gonna go ahead and pause this and let's um, set our viewport shading back to the solid mode and let's re-enable our show overlays and let's also enable the show emitter for the viewport display and then uh, we want to now hide the sparkler flame so that we do not have any difficulty when selecting the emitter all right for the third enhancement we will add more varieties of sparks we want thick sparks long ones and short sparks we also want to create tiny sparks to add a dusty feel to our sparkler all right so let's navigate to our sparks And let's hit 7 on the keyboard to uh, go to the top view next we want to select all our sparks and uh, we want to duplicate them uh, to use them to create um, our other set of sparks okay just to speed things up so hit shift D on the keyboard and let's uh, hit Y to constrain them on the Y axis and let's move this till they are about 20 centimeters away from the head of the original sparks all right now for these sparks we want to create our thick version okay so i'm going to go ahead uh, first of all to enable toggle x-ray and then uh, i'm going to make sure that we have the individual origin set for our transform pivot point and then i'm going to hit tab on the keyboard to go to the edit mode and let's make sure we have vertex selected okay so 
I'm going to select the vertices on the head of each spark and also ensure that I do not select the vertices on the spikes are uh, only one vertices on the head so let's hold on to shift as we select all the vertices on the rest of our sparks now for this one i want to be careful because um, the spike of this uh, spark is intersecting with this other spark okay so i want to be careful to make sure i don't select the ends of the uh, spike here and also as you can see this is the end of another spike for this spark so i won't also be selecting that one okay so let's quickly select the remaining ones and uh, I'm going to switch this to the uh, lasso select tool or the select lasso tool uh, to make things a little bit easier. All right. So let me draw out my marks and select these other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, draw around this to select all the vertices here. Okay, now um, I can see clearly that these vertices belongs to the end of uh, spike. So let me just be careful not to include them in the selection. All right, so now uh, we can test things. Let's just uh, navigate around a bit to make sure we have not selected the ends of any uh, spike. And uh, as you can see, I think I had everything perfectly selected. So now um, we are going to scale out uh, this uh, selection. So hit S on the keyboard and let's uh, type 2 and enter. And now we want to head over to the top view and let's select the vertices on the tail. Uh, let me switch back to my select box mode and let's select all the vertices at the ends of the tails of our sparks. Hit S on the keyboard and two to scale them up a bit. And now we are done with our tick spark version. So let's hit tab to go to the object mode and let's rename each of them. I want to uh, select the first one, hit F2 on the keyboard and let's add uh, tick to the name. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this one and paste it um, right on the names of the others. All right, now I'm going to do this for the rest of our other sparks. And I will do them quickly to speed things up. All right, so now we are going to create the long versions of our spark. Now let's uh, go ahead and then reselect the original sparks again. And let's hit Shift D on the keyboard and Y to constrain on the Y axis and move this up. Okay, about 20 centimeters again away from uh, our newly uh, created sparks. Now let's bring them into focus, hit tab on the keyboard to go to edit mode and let's select all the vertices on the head and spikes and hit G on the keyboard and Y to constrain to the Y axis and let's move this up 30 centimeters, all right, to make them longer. All right, now hit tab to go to the object mode and let's rename each of them. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing like I did for the other spark. I'm going to add long to the name. So hit F2 on the keyboard and let's type long. And let me copy this one.
All right, now I'm going to do this quickly. All right, next we are going to create uh, the short versions of our Spark. So again, I'm going to reselect the original Sparks again. Let's hit Shift D to duplicate and then hit Y to constrain to the Y axis. And let's move them so that they are about 20 centimeters away from the top of the long ones. Let's bring them to focus and hit tab on the keyboard and let's let all the vertices on the head and spikes and let's hit G and Y and let's uh, move them about 10 centimeters downwards. All right, so let's hit tab to go to the object mode and let's rename all of them by adding short to their name. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this quickly for the others. All right, so now we have finished creating the short version of our sparks. All right, now it is time to create the last set of sparks, which is going to be the specs these ones will not have any spikes on them and so we will duplicate the first original spark to create them all right so now i'm going to go ahead and uh, locate my first original spark uh, which is this one right over here all right so let's select it and let's um, come down here and hit shift D on the keyboard and Y to constrain to the Y axis and let's move this all the way down till the head of the spark is about 10 centimeters away from the uh, tail of the original one. Now we are going to make this um, small so let's uh, zoom in a little bit and then uh, we want to go to the edit mode so hit tab and let's select all the vertices at the top and hit G Y and let's move them down till our spec is about five centimeters long. So let me count this out. We have one, two, three, four, and then five. And next we are gonna create our second spec. So hit the tab key to go to the object mode and let's duplicate this one. So hit shift D and let's constrain to the X axis and let's move this all the way here. Now for our second spec, we want to increase the um, we want to increase the thickness of the end of the tail so that it's almost the same as the head. So let's um, hit tab to go to the edit mode, select all the vertices here, and let's hit S to scale them out. All right, and I think this scale is quite okay. So let's uh, click to um, set it. And let's uh, hit tab to come back to the object mode. Next, we want to create our third spark, which will have both the head and tail tapered in, but the midsection will be a bit thick. We need to create a new icosphere for this. So first, I want to move the 3D cursor close to our specs. So I'm going to snap it to the second one. So let's hit Shift S on the keyboard and let's choose cursor to select it. Uh, next, we are going to hit Shift A, head over to Mesh and choose Icosphere. Um, our Icosphere is really large, so we are going to the Property Settings and let's reduce the radius to a value of 1 cm. Uh, great stuff, let me hide this one and let's hit G on the keyboard and let's uh, constrain to the X axis by hitting X and let's move this all the way here. Now to taper um, both ends of the pack, uh, we need to go to the edit mode 
and let's uh, scale this on the y axis so hit s on the keyboard and y okay and as you can see the ends of both uh, both ends of the sparks are tipped in all right so let's click to set this one and as you can see our if we should go to the object mode our origin is right in the middle and we do not want this we want uh, the origin to be right at the bottom so i'm going to do this by going to the edit mode and let's move all our vertices up so hit gy on the keyboard and let's um, move this so that the um, last vertex on the tail is sitting right on the origin next i'm going to go to the object mode and let's kill this so that it's almost the same height as our other specs all right this looks quite good and uh, what we want to do next is to create our last spec all right so we're going to hit shift a for this head over to mesh and then we are going to create an ordinary icosphere now let's hit gx and let's move it all the way here and let's kill this in just a bit all right now because i scale these two objects whilst i was in the object mode I want to, you know, apply skills, all right, so that I reset your skills to one. So hit Control A and choose uh, Skill. All right, now it is time to rename all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and select this first one and hit F2 on the keyboard and let's call this Specky Spark underscore A. Let me do this again. All right, now I want to copy the name. So F2 again and hit Control C. And let's select this second one, F2, and let's hit Control V to paste. And let's change the A to a B. All right, so let's do this for the third spec. F2, Control V, and let's uh, rename this to C. So select the fourth one, F2 again. And let's uh, change the A to D. All right, finally, we will put all our specky spark in a new collection. All right, and the reason for this is that we want to create a different particle system for our specs. Uh, we do not want them to be in the sparse collection, otherwise, they will be used by our first particle system. So let's select all of them. Let's hit M on the keyboard and let's uh, click on new collection and let's call uh, this collection Specky Sparks. Now, if we should collapse this, we can see we have them under the Specky Sparks collection. All right, so we are done creating all the varieties of our Sparks. But before we end this, uh, let's um, select our empty displays test code. I realized I placed this accidentally here. So let's move this um, away from the Sparks collection into our general collection. All right, next we want to affect the scale and velocity of the particles as they age. Uh, we want them to start smaller and slower and as they age, they get larger and faster. We will do this with a particle texture. So let's select our sparkler emitter in the outliner and let's head over to the viewport and let's hit the period key on the numpad and let's uh, orbit this around till we have a very good view of our sparkler. All right, uh, next we want to set our viewport shading to render preview and then we want to hide overlays and let's head over to the particle properties and let's scroll all the way down to the texture section and next let's click on the new button to add a new particle texture and let's rename it to spark age texture
and next we want our texture to influence uh, the velocity and then the size of our sparks so let's head over to the texture properties and next um, we want to change this from the displaced texture we created earlier to our particle system texture now we want to set the texture type to blend and let's head over to the influence section and let's enable size and physics velocity and let's disable the general time now as you can see our sparkler looks quite different uh, let's jump all the way to frame one and let's play and pause this somewhere here and as you can see our young sparks look really small and as they age they get bigger and this is because um, the left side of our texture which represents the young spark uh, has a color value of zero which means uh, they will be at about zero percent of their size and velocity and as we go all the way to the right which represent fully grown sparks uh, the color value is one which means they will be about uh, 100 percent of their size and velocity now i think i like the look of our sparkler uh, but i want them to be at their full size when they are about half of their lifetime age so i'm going to do this by making sure that in the middle of the texture uh, the color value is set to one so let's head over to the color section and let's let's enable color ramp and let's uh first of all let's select this color stop and i want to remove the transparency for it so let's click on it and let's set the alpha value to one Uh, next we want to increase the value of the um, color uh, we do not want the sparks to be at zero percent of their size when they are emitted so let's set this to about a value of 0 0.350 and now let's select the white color stop here and let's move this about um, 0.5 of the color position we can just click here and set this to 0.5 and this will enable the particles to reach their full size about half of their lifetime age all right so now let's check this out let's uh, head over to frame one and play this and i think our spark light is looking good uh, but I want to reduce the effect of the texture on the velocity. So let's scroll all the way back to the influence section and let's uh, set the physics velocity to 0.8. And let's replay this again. All right, I think this looks really cool. all right so for our next improvement we want to add more randomization to the lifetime and scale of our particle system using an animation noise modifier all right so let's head over to the particle properties and let's insert a keyframe for the lifetime value so hit i on the keyboard and let's head over to the render section and let's um and let's insert a keyframe for the scale so hit i on the keyboard and next let's, let's head over to the graph editor and then let's uh, bring up our f curves for the particle settings let's select lifetime and add noise modifier and let's set the scale value to three and let's set the strength to six and next select the size f curve and let's add a noise modifier again and let's set the scale to 2 and strength to 0.3 all right next we want to add a turbulence force field to our sparkler now you can skip this part if you want to finish the tutorial quickly since it will not have much effect on our result however it may be useful later on if you want to add more variation to the behavior of our sparkler
So um, let's um, hit Shift C on the keyboard to bring our 3D cursor to the center of the viewport. Shift A and head over to Force Field and add Turbulence. Let's let's bring up the property settings and let's uh, change the radius to a value of three centimeters. And next we want to zoom in, so hit the period key on the numpad. And let's now parent our turbulence to the emitter. So I'm going to locate it in the outliner. And as you can see, this is placed in the sparks collection, all right? Uh, so first of all, let me hit M on the keyboard and let's move this to collection. And let's uh, go back to our outliner and let's uh, hold on control and select sparkler emitter and let's um, hit ctrl p and choose object keep transform next let's head over to the physics properties um, but let's make sure our turbulence is selected and let's set the strength to a value of 10 the size to a value of 0 0.005 and the noise to a value of 5. All right, for our last enhancement, we are going to add a new particle system for our specs. So let's select the sparkler emitter and let's head over to the particle settings. Now, before we continue, I just realized that I accidentally created a keyframe for the lifetime and scale parameters on frame 35. Now, since we are only using uh, this keyframe to create our noise F modifiers, they can be on any frame, but I normally like to put them on frame one. Okay, so let's move our mouse pointer to the timeline, hit G on the keyboard, and let's move the keyframe to frame one. All right, now before we create our new particle system for the specs, uh, let's go ahead and rename the current one to Spark Particle System. And let's also rename its settings to Spark Particle Settings. Now let's click on the plus button to add our new particle system and let's call it Spec Particle System. Now, before we go ahead and start adjusting uh, the um, properties of our new spec particle system, we want to first of all uh, start off with a copy of the particle settings for our spark particle system. So let's head over to the data section and choose the spark particle settings. And then we want to clone it by clicking on this button over here. And let's rename this to spec particle settings. All right, let's head over to the render section. And let's uh, change the instance collection from Sparks to our Specky Sparks collection. Uh, let's also enable the pick random. And uh, we will have to remember to do this for our first particle system. Now let's also enable use count and click on the arrow here and then we want to show more of our specky spark underscore D and that is the smallest of all the specky sparks and we want more of them to show. So I'm going to increase the count uh, number for it. So let's set this to three. And now let's head over to our scale property. Let's right click on it and choose clear keyframes. And let's set the value to 0 0.05. All right, now let's head over to the lifetime and let's also right click on it and choose uh, clear keyframes. And let's set the value to 6. And let's reinsert a keyframe again by hitting I on the keyboard. 
Now let's head over to the graph editor and what we want to do is to copy the F modifier for the lifetime of our spark particle settings to the lifetime for our new spec particle settings. All right. So under the spark particle settings, let's select the lifetime and let's head over to the sidebar and let's click on the copy F modifiers button. Now let's head over to the lifetime under the spec particle settings and let's click on the paste F modifiers. All right, so we have now uh, finished setting up our new particle system. Uh, before we test things, let's head over to our first particle systems and do some few adjustments. Uh, let's first of all increase the number to 40,000. All right, I want the number of um, sparks to be about twice the number of specs, which is currently at 20,000. All right, so um, if these numbers are too huge for your computer, uh, you may want to go ahead and reduce them, but just make sure that your uh, number of sparks is about twice the number of specs. Now let's also uh, remember to go to the render section and enable pick random. All right, so now let's test things out. Let's head over to the viewport and let's jump to uh, frame one and let's play this. Um, this is a bit zoom in too much. So let me zoom out just a little bit and let me pause here. And as you can see, um, I like the look of this. We have our sparks and we also have our specs uh, coming off the emitter, giving our sparkler a dusty feel. All right, now it is time to do a viewport rendering. Uh, but before I do so, I want to show the sparkler flame. And then uh, let's hide our sparkler emitter. So let's head over all the way to the viewport display section and let's uh, disable the show emitter. Okay, so now before we begin rendering, I just remembered that I do not apply the spark material to our last two specs. Okay, uh, so uh, if we should click on the second spec and head over to the material properties, you can see that the spec material or the spark material is applied. So let's select our third spec and let's head over to the browse materials and let's select the first material. Okay, let's do this also for the last spec. All right, so now we can begin our rendering. Head over to the view menu and uh, click on viewport render animation. All right, so the render is complete and let's go ahead and close the render window. And let's view our animation. Go to the render menu and click on view animation. Uh, it takes a while for this to start playing fast. So uh, let's just wait for a couple of seconds. All right. So now, as you can see, our sparkler looks much better than before. I hope you have enjoyed the second part of this tutorial. Join me in the third part to create a nice shader for our sparkler. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, enable the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.